Hi, welcome to our discussion today of equations of accelerated motion. Today we're going to be talking about how to figure out how far something travels that's accelerating in a certain amount of time, how fast it travels in a certain amount of time, and then also if you know other things, how long it will take to travel either a certain distance or to speed up or slow down by a certain amount of velocity. So let's get started. We'll start here with how far things move. So now, constant velocity, figuring how far something moves, pretty straightforward because constant velocity means you go the same distance every second. So for example, if I'm traveling at a rate of 30 meters per second, that means that every second I'm going 30 meters. I start out at zero meters, then I go to the next second, I go to 30 meters, and then to 60 meters, and on and on. And the equation for figuring out how far I've traveled is simply my change in distance is equal to my velocity times the change in time. So however long it took me to move, my speed equals how far I've moved. Now for accelerated motion, it's a little bit trickier. Of course, in accelerated motion, objects are traveling farther or less far each second, so the amount of distance they're changing is different because their speed is different. So our equations for figuring these out are going to be a little more complicated. And we found that the equation for this is equal to the the height that you're at is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. Now this tells you the distance, the height you are above or below the uh, throwing point or the starting point of where we got started off at. This equation works great for our dropped balls or for throwing things up. It also works horizontally, although here I've chosen the letter H for what we're talking about. But remember, a height is just a distance. This could easily change to the letter D if you were moving on sideways stuff. You wouldn't leave it as an H. But this equation works great for any constant acceleration motion. Okay, let's just write that down real quick. This is the height above or below the release point. Let's do a quick example of that. So if we want to know how high we are, let's say we throw our ball here with a velocity of 30 meters per second and it goes up about this high in the first second. Of course, the second second, it's going to be traveling slower than the first second, so it's not going to go up as high. And then the third second is going to get very little at all. And of course, it's losing 10 meters per second every second, so it's gotten a zero, and it's falling back down now, and it's speeding up, so every second it's gaining distance, and this second is like way down here somewhere. So we have this path of the ball as it comes up and goes down. If we want to know here, so this is one second, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say we want to know something about, I don't know, somewhere around here, which maybe is like 6.5 seconds. And this should really be a little farther down. So if we want to know where the, the height of the ball is at 6.5 seconds. We simply plug the time into our equation along with the initial velocity and our acceleration. So let's do that. So the height is equal to the initial velocity of 30 meters per second times a time of 6.5 seconds okay, plus one half the acceleration which is negative 10 meters per second per second times that 6.5 meters per second squared. Now there's some interesting things going on here so let's let's solve it down a little bit. This is 30 times 6.5 that's that's 195 meters plus, now remember, this part of the equation, this first part of the equation tells you how high you would be if there was no acceleration. So if there was no gravity, this ball wouldn't have gone up and come down. This ball would have traveled way up here to 195 meters. Right? So this is the without acceleration part of the equation. Now this second part of the equation tells you how much gravity has changed that distance by, so how much you've fallen by. Um, so when we figure that out, we find that that is a negative 211.25 meters. So instead of being up here at the 195 mark, you've fallen negative 
211.25 meters downward. And that gives us a total height then of, it looks like, negative 16.25 meters. So our height, of course this was zero, where we release is always zero meters, is down here at negative 16.5 meters. Okay, so that's our height equation. And that's an example of how to use the height equation, how to interpret, especially those negative heights. Now we can, a special case happens on this when we drop something. So a dropped ball. So instead of throwing it up in the air like this with initial velocity, we just let go of it. And of course that means that the initial velocity is zero meters per second when you drop it. Okay. When that happens, our equation h equals v naught t plus one half a t squared this first thing, this V0, is 0 meters per second, and 0 times any time, of course, the whole thing goes to 0. So our height here becomes just 1 half AT squared. So that's a special case of this equation when the initial velocity is 0. I'm going to box these two in in green so we can see those are, those are two main equations so far. And notice how that second equation, this one right here, is just a result of v naught, the drop one where the initial velocity is equal to zero. All right, awesome. So that's the two main ways to calculate how high something is at any time. Now let's take a look at how fast things are moving at different times. To find this, we have an equation that's our change in velocity is equal to our acceleration times our change in time. So let's say that we throw a ball up and we start it at 40 meters per second and it goes up and of course every second it loses 10 meters per second. I think it's, it travels less and less a distance and then on the way back down it matches that as a mirror here and it falls back down. Okay. So we want to know here, well, how fast is it moving at say, I don't know, 2.5 seconds. So here that's one second, two seconds. So up in here somewhere, how fast is the ball moving? To do that, we simply plug in our time into our equation and we find our change in velocity. So our change in velocity is equal to the acceleration, which in this case is negative 10 meters per second per second, times a time of 2.5 seconds. And we get here a change in velocity is equal to negative 25 meters per second. Notice how this second cancels one of these seconds. So we're left with just meters per second. So our change of velocity is negative 25 meters per second. Be careful here though. That doesn't mean we're traveling at 25 meters per second or negative 25 meters per second. This is right here. We're still moving upward. We've lost a change of velocity. We've lost 25 meters per second. So really our velocity at final velocity at that 2.5 second mark is really going to be 40 meters per second minus 25 meters per second because we've lost that much and that's going to equal a total of 15 meters per second. So up here we're at a total velocity of 15 meters per second. All right, which makes sense because this is 30, 20, 10 and this is 15-ish inside here. Alright, awesome. Now this equation can be rewritten in a form that makes this reasoning a little easier and it just makes us think about what change in velocity means. And of course changing anything is the ending minus beginning. For example, if I were to tell you, ask you what your change in your uh, bank account balance was in a day, you'd take your ending balance of the day minus the beginning balance. If that change was positive, you gained money. If it was negative, you lost money. Same thing for changes in velocity or changes of anything. It's the final velocity minus the initial velocity, and this V sub zero means initial velocity. And that's going to be equal to our acceleration times delta T. Notice that's the same equation here, but we've just broken out the change in velocity into what it really is. So that means our final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times change in time. Notice how this is the same equation we have up here. Watch how it works. So final velocity is initial velocity, which is 40 meters per second, 
plus our acceleration of negative 10 meters per second per second times our time of 2.5 seconds. These two become that negative 25 meters per second plus 40 gives us 15 meters per second. So now we have two equations. I'll highlight them in yellow box. We have this equation and we have this equation. Notice, however, that this equation is just this one written out more explicitly. So you have a choice of either using the delta v equation, doing a little less algebra, but then having some reasoning at the end of what's going on. All right, this is a really good physics approach. And this is a little more involved algebra, but it gives you a final answer after plugging numbers in. So depending on your preference here, right, a little more physics thinking going on here. Here, a little more algebra thinking going on. Let's take a look at this one. So we have a problem with that's a dropped height. So we say, hey, if it's going to drop 60 meters, how long will that take? We can find this by simply solving for t here. And to do that, I multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. So I get 2 times the height is equal to a t squared, right? Because 1 half is like divided by 2. And then to get rid of the a, I simply divide both sides by a. And of course, the a's on this side cancel, and I'm left with t squared is equal to 2h over a. And I just flip the sides of the equation. And of course, to get rid of the t squared, I gotta take the square root. And whatever I do on this side, I do on both sides of the equation. And the square root of t squared is simply t is equal to the square root of twice the height divided by the acceleration. So for example, if I did want to know, well, how long does it take to go 65 meters? I have to first recognize that 65 meters is for a dropped ball is going to be this negative distance because it's right here is my zero meter mark and then the ball is down here somewhere at negative 65 meters right so as I plug this in I say hey my time is equal to the square root of 2 times negative 65 meters meaning 65 meters below where I dropped it, all divided by acceleration of negative 10 meters per second per second. Now notice here that my meters are going to cancel. My per seconds here are going to be these are per second squared, and the square root is going to take care of the squared part of that. I'm going to leave just seconds. And if we do this work, we find that this is equal to roughly 3.6 seconds. So this is another equation that we have. I'll highlight this one in red. Last but not least, our velocity. So if we're trying to find how long it takes to have a certain change in velocity, we simply solve this for t. And of course, that is divide both sides by a. And we find that the time it takes is equal to the change in velocity divided by a which again we can break out the change in velocity say the final velocity minus the whoops minus the starting velocity divided by a and so we say we have a ball that's launched at say 36 meters per second and we want to know how long it takes to reach the top which of course the top the velocity is zero so we want to see how long it takes to lose 36 meters per second we can plug this in as t is equal to the final velocity of 0 meters per second minus the initial velocity of 36 meters per second all divided by negative 10 meters per second per second that's going to give me negative 36 divided by 10 the time is going to be 3.6 seconds notice a meter per second meter per second cancel leaving just seconds and on the bottom of two fractions goes to the top Something important to note here, if you ever get a negative sign on a time or under a radical or a, um, a square root symbol, then you just missed one of the other negatives. There will be another negative in there somewhere to cancel out. Go back and look for your reasoning to see why. Here we're losing speed, so that our change in velocity is a negative velocity or negative change here, and that's what cancels.